want to say Happy New Year to you. We want to say Happy New Year to you. <laughs> Amen. Good to see you alive and well and looking good in 2018. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome all of you, welcome all of God's children. We want to welcome those of you who are sharing with us uh, via live streaming. It is truly good and pleasant to be in God's house once again. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, when I was at home, we, um, uh, we was there just relaxing and enjoying 25 degree weather. Amen. I thought I was getting away from it and got in it. Uh, and it was that wet, cold. I think I like this cold better. Amen. <laughs> And uh, my wife, uh, who's uh, dealing with the flu, so continue to pray for her. Um, you know, people always ask her, when you're going back, when you're going back, when you're going back. And uh, most of the time I would respond by saying, I'm going back to Denver uh, on a certain day. I'm going back to Denver on a certain day. And I was uh, plugged, picked to preach a watch night service. I did not go there to preach a watch night service, amen. Uh, and I went to a very traditional church, and I did not have a tie, a coat, or anything. And they was just looking at me. I'm like, your pastor invited me. Amen. <laughs> and then after that, you know, we, um, we, we uh, shared with some of the saints there. And uh, they said, when are you leaving to go back? And I said, I'm going home on Thursday. <laughs> and um, my wife. Uh, when we got in the car, she said, did, did, did you realize what you said? I'm like, babe, I, sometimes I just be talking. I don't know what I be saying. You know? <laughs> and she said, um, she said, you said we're going home. And I said, did I? She said, yes. I said, well, that's what it is now. <laughs> and so uh, when we landed the other day, it was it felt so good to be back at home. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Once again, thanks to uh, Brother Williams for sharing with us. And uh, I don't know if it was that smoked sausage or that spicy. Uh, it was the spicy, but the choir got part of that meat and they just was hot and live. Amen. Give them a hand clap of praise. Thank God for our choir. Amen. Amen. So keep the smoked sausage coming. Amen. <clears throat> There's a word from the Lord. We thank God for all of you on today. Uh, there's a word from the Lord in Mark chapter number five. Mark chapter number five. <clears throat> Mark chapter number five. Verses 25 to 34. Verses 25 through 34. And when you have it, say amen. amen. <clears throat> and there you find these words. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Well, well. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, mm -hmm. touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch, but his clothes, I shall be whole. Yeah. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Yeah. And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing, but when the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You may be seated. Leviticus, you don't have to turn there, but I would like to read it for you. Verse chapter 15 and verse 19, you'll find these words. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, 
She shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the evening. This passage is one that arrests us when we read it. It is one that we are comfortable with. It's one that we like to hear how this woman uh, demonstrated a level of perseverance and how she pushed against all odds to get into the presence of Jesus. Uh, but some years ago, I had the blessed privilege of sitting at the feet uh, of one of my preaching mentors uh, who is one of the best preaching sisters I know, uh, Dr. Mary Whitley Moss. And I asked her, I say, Moss, is it anything in this passage from a woman's perspective that I am missing? I say, so many times we preach it and we shout about the healing and about her touching the hem of the garment. And Moss and her southern drawl say, well, baby, meet me at Cracker Barrel, and we can talk about it. <laughs> and so there at Cracker Barrel, she is a preaching guru, and she's sharing the tidbits of things that I would never think about from a woman's perspective. And she said, when the woman actually touches the hem of the garment, that's actually the second miracle. But the first miracle that takes place, which is actually the theme of the sermon today, is that the woman decided to think for herself. My brothers and sisters, as we engage and we uh, dive into this fifth chapter, I want to challenge us as we enter into a new year that we start moving to a place where our minds are no longer trapped where our minds are not being overwhelmed by fear factor and our minds are not being caught up in the what ifs and I don't knows, that our minds become free because when you free your mind, the rest will follow. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing when we look at chapter number five, we begin to see what is going on that would challenge her from wanting to think for herself. Now in order to deal with chapter number five, you have to understand Leviticus about chapters number 11 through 16, when they deal with the Levitical law of how issues and challenges and diseases would be identified and then what would happen to those individuals once they were identified as being unclean as it relates to those who had leprosy. Uh, the lepers had what was called a colony. And that colony was set aside out of the post, uh, out of the population where they could see what was going on, but they could not affiliate with the common people along the way. So they would be isolated because of their communicable disease. This situation is not as communicable, but it is as it relates to how the law perceives it. When you begin to read the law, it even says that if a woman who has an issue touch her children, her children are unclean. If a woman with this issue touch her husband, her husband is unclean. If a woman with this issue lay on the bed or sleep on the bed or sit on the couch and you were to sit in that same chair or sit on that couch, then you are deemed unclean. So even in all of this, she too has a colony where she would have to be pushed to the side, not among the common people, but off at the beaten path to see what's going on, but not be able to enjoy what's going on. When you begin to think about it, you have to think of the Levitical law, and you have to think of it in this nature. The Levitical law was written by those who were of the tribe of Levi. The tribe of Levi was the priestly tribe. It was the quote unquote religious tribe. It was the one who laid out the religious uh, litur lit lit uh, liturgy and, and the religious direction. It was the one who created the spiritual awareness that all the other tribes needed to connect with God. So when the Levites say something to be so, it is so. 
So now you have to understand what this lady is in chapter number five of Mark. See, when the Levites say that you're unclean because you have an issue of blood, then that also means the church say you're unclean. The priests say you're unclean. Society says you're unclean. Law says you're unclean. Family, friends, and anything you are connected with says that you are unclean. And because of your current condition, your plight of uncleanliness, then you will be pushed into a colony not to enjoy the lifestyle of everyone else. My brothers and sisters, even when she would come in close proximity to you, she would have to holler before you get close, unclean. Lord have mercy. <laughs> How better off would we be <laughs> as if we were going through the daily trials and tribulations, then we would walk and people would say, I'm unclean. <laughs> How many times you would not be crying and your heart would not be broken if people would say, I'm unclean. How much money you would have kept in your pocket. How many tears you wouldn't have had to share if you would have heard somebody say, wait, you don't want to deal with me. I am unclean. This is how her life was every day. So once again, she's dealing with society, she's dealing with the priest, she's dealing with the church, she's dealing with friends, she's dealing with family, she's dealing with every institute. When they see her, they see her as unclean. And talking to Mary Moss, she shares with me, she said, Wanna, you have to understand how hard it is to get someone to think for themselves who is always allowing others to think for them. Once an individual experienced the opportunity to think for themselves, then they embrace the freedom of knowing that I can do this on my own. Now you have to look at the situation that this sister had been in this situation for 12 long years. She had been trying to get out of her situation for 12 years and for 12 years, nothing ever got better. If you're writing this morning, our first point we would like to make to you is let's examine the condition of her health. In verses 24 through 26, it tells us that she had this issue of blood for, 20, for 12 young years. She suffered many things, many physicians, and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but grew worse. The condition of her health, number one, the diagnosis was she had an issue of blood. The duration was 12 years. The discomfort. She had tried all of the remedies, the home remedies. She had been to all of the specialists. She had been to all of the doctors. The damage was she had spent all, and the danger was her condition had grew worse. It's easy when you can leave your general practitioner and go to a specialist. But what happens when your specialist say, I have no answers. I wish I'll talk back to him. <laughs> this basically was her situation. She had gone from doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor, and now she has no money, and her situation is the same. My brothers and sisters, you don't even think straight when you have sickness in your body. I know how to begin. Can I get one amen? <laughs> For 12 long years, she dealt with this calamity. She dealt with this issue in her body, and she had become dysfunctional. Can I ask you a question? How long have you been dysfunctional? How long has that been something in your life that you have not been able to get out? And every time you try to deal with it, you look at it and it gets worse. Or you start working on this and when you think you got this right, then something goes out over here and you're trying to get this right and then you get back over here and you're constantly saying if it ain't one thing, it's another. You're stuck in between trying to fix your life and you're never able to think with a level of freedom. 
my brothers and sisters, as we embrace 2018 with all that we have, God gives us permission to embrace it with a level of freedom, a free mind. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? With a level of freedom, with a freeness about you that says, this is going to be the best year of my life. Yes, you're going to cry. Yes, you're going to have some setbacks. Yes, people are going to disappoint you. Yes, people are going to want to push you to act out of, out of your character. And at the end of the day, you're going to give God glory because you've already said that this year is going to be the best year of your life. For 12 years, she struggled. How long have you struggled? I lost friendship with a good friend of mine. Because I told her one day, why do you keep putting your house up to bond him out of jail? I know you love him. But you can love him and keep your house. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? How many times you're going to keep rescuing him and not allow him to learn the lesson? Because a lesson not learned is bound to be repeated. Am I talking to anybody here? How many times have you connected with people who you knew weren't any good for you? And here you are 10 years later looking at them saying, I know the Lord going to change them. And everybody looking at you like, I hope the Lord change you. <laughs> we have to look and embrace it because all of us in here has a level of dysfunctionality in our lives. All of us in here have our minds with our loved ones or our friends or on sickness or, or with other situations. And sometimes it entraps us in the moment and we do not have the freedom to think freely. That's what this woman dealt with for 12 long years. She was hearing from everybody else, but she never heard from Jesus. I challenge you friends, I challenge you brothers and sisters, start hearing it from Jesus. <laughs> And when you hear it from Jesus, you don't have to ask, is it true? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Am I making sense, anybody? Hear it from him. For 12 years, she was dysfunctional because she was listening to everybody else. My brothers and sisters, we have to be careful that we don't allow people to occupy space in our mind and don't pay rent. We have to be careful that we don't allow our minds to be garbage disposal where people just dump garbage in our minds over and over again. We got to stop letting people rape our ears and put things in our ears that are ungodly. We have to protect our ears, our, our, our eyes, and our heart and say, speak to me, Lord, so I can hear what you have to say. Sometimes the craziest thing you do may be the thing God ordained. It may be the thing that God is going to set your life apart with, but all of your friends are telling you, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Statistics say, don't do that. Don't buy this. Don't do that. And you know God is saying, this is your moment. You have to shut it down and say, speak to my heart. And when God speaks, things change. Not only do we see the condition of her health, but secondly, we see the circumstances of her healing. In verses 27 through 29, look at what it says. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, if I, if I, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. There comes a time in your life where you have to think for yourself. It was only in verse 28, as Dr. Moss is sharing with me, and we had cracker bell, and we having church all by ourselves. I'm like, Lord, how I didn't see. In 28, she said, that's when the first miracle happens in this passage. It wasn't when she touched the H-E-M, which was connected to the H-I-M. 
the first miracle was when she shut out the noise and she started thinking for herself. And when she thought for herself, she defied the Levitical law. She defied what her friends said. She broke rank from everything else. And she even put herself in jeopardy. She could have been stoned for this. But when she thought about it, she said, I'd rather die trying to get to Jesus than to die saying, I've never ever met him. I just said something right there. We have to try to get to the feet of Jesus, to worship him, to pour out ourselves and then allow him to pour into us. I, look at your neighbor and say I. I may touch but his clothes. I shall be whole. Can you imagine that, all of you military brothers and sisters, as a cadence when you were running? If I can touch with the hem of his clothes, can you imagine that the more you saying that, the more excited that you're getting because you've heard that he's gone around doing good. You've heard that every funeral he showed up at, the undertaker got mad because people got out the casket. You heard that every time he shows up, miracles are performed. And in her mind, she has a cadence and a chant that if I can just get to his hymn, then my life will never be the same. My brothers and sisters, 2018 has to be about an I getting to him. It has to be about I getting to him couple of things here. The circumstances of her, feel, her, her, her healing, number one, it involved facts. See, she had heard that in Luke chapter 6, 19, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for virtue went out of him and healed them. So she already knew that there was some miracle working power that would flow through him. Secondly, it involved faith that she would be able to come down from this colony and come through the city and get to him without anybody stoning her that she would touch. Then it involved fortitude. She just demonstrated great courage because she, she could have been stoned at any moment and involved fulfillment because she touched him and she held on till she got what she came for. I'm going to say that one more time because y'all going to sleep. She held on until she got what she came for. I don't know where you are right now, but you better hold on this year until you get what you come for. You hold on. You stay where you are until God blesses you where you are. Too many times we want to be planted in somebody else's uh, 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 grass. You need to stay where you are and blossom where you are planted. God will be able to bless you right where you are, but you have to be willing to stay there, to fight for it, and don't leave until you get what you come from. Am I making sense, anybody? The compassion of her healing now, you have to take in consideration that the same thing, that she had to say that got her kicked out into the outer colony. It's the same thing that she would say to get her to the him, to the feet of Jesus. Think about it now. Because you have to remember he's in the press. And basically as he's walking, he's just bumping into people. And people are bumping him and, and all of this. And, and, and all she did was the same thing that put her in the back of the line. Was the same thing that got her to the front of the line. We, we, we should know a little bit about that. <laughs> the, the same thing that put her in the back was the same thing that got her in the front of the line. All she did was start at the back, Dr. Jackson, and say, unclean. Take another step, unclean. And all of them had to part ways until they opened up for her to get what she wanted from Jesus Christ. Am I making sense to anybody? Look, 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 don't worry about how I got mine. You just make sure you get yours. You may have to shout unclean. I may have to shout anything else. But let me tell you, at the feet of Jesus, there are blessings upon blessings upon blessings. 
the same thing that had her ostracized, the same thing that kept her back was the thing that got her into the presence of Jesus. Don't worry about where you are. Don't worry about what's going on in your life. Don't worry about what people say about you. Look, you can't get caught up in that. Don't worry about if you are, uh, 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 I used to use this word all the time, uh, a quagmire. Y'all remember? Y'all, y'all? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I bought that one at seminary. All right, all right, yeah. And, and don't worry about all of that because the reality is no matter where you are, Jesus already is. He knows where you are. He knows what is going on with you. And he has created a way of escape. All he needs you to do for 2018 is to think for yourself. Lastly and finally, as I rush to a close. Now watch this. Watch this. He says, number three, not only do we see the condition of her health and secondly, the circumstances of her healing, but thirdly, the compassion of the healer the compassion look at verse 30 and 31 and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said who touched me and his disciples said unto him thou seest the multitude thronging thee and sayest thou who touched thee and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing but the woman fearing and trembling knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all of the truth. Yeah. Now watch this. This is key. This is key. Before she got something from him, she gave herself to him. Mm. See, see, uh, uh, we, we didn't have a lot of time to preach on, on, on Christmas Eve. It was this wonderful day with our kids. Just a great day. Uh, not, not a sermon I would have preached we would have dealt with the wise men and the Bible says that when the wise men showed up they fell down at his feet and worshipped him comma then they gave unto him gifts <laughs> see you will never give gifts until you give yourself first Oh my God, when you give yourself and you try to give a gift, the king says, I'm the gift giver. <laughs> and whatever you give to him, he's only going to take it, expand it, embellish it, and give it right back to you. Talk to me, somebody. So, 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 so look at what happens. She worships him. This falling down at the feet is a sign of worship. And before she received what she needed, she gave herself to him. And Jesus said, now this is somebody. Uh -huh. yeah. An unclean somebody. Uh -huh. Who I can use. Yeah. Oh, unclean. Lord have mercy. We, yes, we, we get so tied up into the cleanliness sometimes yeah. that, that we miss the power of God. Uh, we, we have an old saying, and uh, uh, Paul, uh, you probably know this saying in, in Louisiana, that you can't clean a fish until uh, you catch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Texas, so he heard it too. <laughs> and, and, and the reality is, God can do whatever he wants to do with you once he catches you in the gospel net. <laughs> She comes, she gives of herself. Now look at what he says, and we're done. And he said unto her daughter, that faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. So when we look at these two word holes, we have to always take in consideration that when we're reading and uh, Garden and Fear in their book, uh, Reading the Bible for All It's Worth, teaches you how to read the Bible and understand when different words are just chopped up and piled up. Uh, John chapter 1, 2, and 3, uh, you'll see the word light about 40 times and that word light is used about 15 different ways. And, and, and what God and Fee tells us in this passage when he deals with whole and whole is number one, he says that when he says, daughter, thy faith have made thee whole, number one, you're whole in your mind. You're saved because she stepped out on faith not knowing if she could really do what she wanted to do because she had never stepped out and used the freeness of her mind. But then the second whole 
is the wholeness of her body. Am I making sense? So it was a psychological salvific whole, and then there was a wholeness of her body which made her whole again. Too many times we have people who are saved, but they're not healed. Mm. 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 And, and, and that's why we say the old cliche that hurt people hurt people. They're loving, they're kind, they're good people, they're saved, they're going to heaven, but they're damaged goods because they refuse to pour out and let Jesus pour in. <sighs> his reaction, who touched me, his response, go in peace. When you learn how to think for yourself, you don't need an entourage to co-sign for you. You can be the only one in the room that says, I object, and if it's you and God, that's the majority. Am I making sense to anybody? See, when you learn how to think for yourself, there's a level of peace about knowing how to think. There's a level of you being able to rest well when you know how to think for yourself. Now, this is not a message that is questioning the intelligence of anybody. That's, that's not what this message is. Because all of us, no matter how smart we are, got fool in us. I, I, I had a Louisiana moment, excuse me. <laughs> and, and, and that fool can come out. <laughs> And people be looking at you like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> the point I'm saying <laughs> is you have to understand that all of us can be challenged not to live in peace. At 45 years old, in fun, no, I have decided I don't know how much time God going to give me. About another 45 years. I, I, yeah. And then I won't, I won't fly after that. Amen. <laughs> um, I just decided to live in peace. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. It's just, just peace. <laughs> people, people can deal with you easier when they don't have to say, where they at today? See, you're on top of the roller coaster on Monday, and then you're down here on Wednesday. They got to look at you at the coffee machine to see, uh, okay, wh which one I'm dealing with today. God don't want that from us. We're his children. We take on his image. He said he'll give us peace. That's a pass it all understanding. year man sis you should be so cool as the other side of the pillar just relax enjoy your life don't get too high don't get too low love the people you're supposed to love like the people you're supposed to like amen <laughs> Enjoy the greatness of living that God has given you. Yes. And let's learn how to do like this woman. After 12 years of dysfunctional activity, listen now, in a moment of thinking for herself, touching his hem, having an interaction with God, God says, listen, go in peace. Y'all missing me. She just had been in a dysfunctional state for 12 years. And in a moment, God says, go in peace. Oh, oh you don't appreciate sunshine until you had a little rain. You don't appreciate somebody until you pull out lint out of your pockets. You don't appreciate a good car until that bad car you had to trade it in. 
when you have peace, you need to be able to say, Lord, thank you for peace. Thank you for allowing me to love me. Thank you for allowing me to love others. Thank you, God, for giving me this peace and this joy. Because this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Thank you, God. And do like she did. Let us leave this place today in the most peaceful mindset that we've had in years. Don't let nothing run your blood pressure up. Don't let people drunk garbage on you. Tell them to take it to Jesus and tell them when they call you back, tell me what Jesus have to say about it. And go in peace. My brothers and sisters, I, I was the, uh, I'm, I'm closing. I mean, I'm closing. That's my last close. Amen. I, uh, being the, the, the baby of seven and, and just spoiled, I, I ain't making no apologies. Uh, we, we had so much fun at Christmas because I just have so many toys. All mine. And there was one toy I, I didn't quite understand. And, and, and it was this little thing daddy would blow up and he'd stand straight up and daddy'd tell me go tackle it and I'd go tackle it. And then I'd run and get to the door and I'd turn around and he's standing back up. Daddy said, go get him, go get him. And I'd run and, and I'd jump on him and I'd do all kind of moves and I'm doing the wrestling moves I'm jumping off of the couch you know for Christmas you can do anything I'm jumping off a couch on the thing and I'm doing it and hitting it and then I run out the room and I peep back in and he'll be doing the shit and years later I begin to realize whatever that thing had in it God put something similar in us. <laughs> oh my God. That 2018, you gonna get hit. You gonna get kicked. You gonna get lied on. You gonna get talked about. Satan is gonna try to interfere with your family, mess with your children, mess with your job. But all you got to do is take a licking and bounce right back up because the stuff I have on the inside came from God. Look at your neighbor and tell him I can't lose with the stuff I use. I got God on the inside of me. I have the Holy Spirit talking to me. I have Jesus making intercession for me. I have goodness and mercy behind me. I have angels watching over me all day and all night. And because of that, I can have joy, unspeakable joy. My brothers and sisters, I challenge you this year, do like the woman with the issue of blood. Go in peace. Do you receive that word on today? As we're standing all over the auditorium, we extend two invitations. Invitation number one is an invitation to 